Present. Credentials. Present. Great judges. Present. Anthony. Present. Chris Watson. Present. Chris Thomas. Present. Chris Thomas. All right, please rise for the
what happens in a case like that is the value of the property maybe isn't going to be as much as what the demolition has been. So we're going to have property that we're accumulating taxes on that we probably can't even sell in the tax sale. So I just want you to be aware of that if you're thinking about you know, demolishing some buildings maybe and then trying to put that on a tax bill. That, that gets pretty, pretty difficult to do that. So in essence, the demo diminishes the value of the property, is what you're saying? And well, I'm saying the cost of the demolition. If, you know, if it costs you $10,000 to demolish and haul off all of that, then um, it's just a lot. Then it's just a lot. Then you have maybe maybe a five thousand dollar lot. You, you have a ten thousand dollar demolition. So, um, you know, if you decide you want me to do this, I would need detailed information um, by September the fifteenth of each year. I'm going to need to know, you know, a copy of attached bill. Um, I'm going to have to know the name, the account number, our account number that it's connected to, um, and the property address also. Because I'm very precise about matching all that up to make sure that I'm putting that charge on the correct statement. We don't want that to be on the wrong statement, so we have to be very careful about making sure everything is correct. Um, you will have to do your part on your end first, um, and I don't know all the rules on that, but I think you have to give notice, and and then you go ahead and proceed with, with cleaning up whatever it is you're wanting to clean up. Then you're going to present them with a bill, and you'll have to go through those steps before it gets to me. So, um, the delinquent nuisance interest is different than anything else on the tax bill. It's at 8%. So I just wanted you to be aware of that. It's figured differently than, than personal property and real estate uh, penalties and interest. And again, the deadline on me receiving that information is September 15th. We're in the process of getting those statements ready, and we have to manually put those figures on the bill, and then I have to make sure the tax book all totals correctly and calculates right. Then we're sending all those tax bills to the mortgage company, so we need that information on there before we can balance everything, before we can send those tax bills to the mortgage companies, start printing and stuff, because we do that all in-house. We print all the statements, we fold all the statements, and we stuff all the statements. So, Terry, if there's monies that are held in escrow for taxes, you notify them. That's right. correct, and that's one reason why we have to have it by then. We've had a little bit of an issue because we send that tax file to the mortgage companies, and if we don't have that nuisance on there, then we have problems. They send a check that doesn't have the nuisance on there, we have to send a check back. So we want it on there in the beginning when we notify the mortgage company of how much it is. We have had a little bit of, they kind of like to try not to pay that, but so far we've been able to, to uh, get that all collected. Good. I thought when Jeff Clark was on that when we did uh, the nuisance properties, because that was a, one of his pet peeves, that I thought we had already approved an uh, ordinance. Am I right or wrong, Mark? Do you know anything about yeah, it? You may have approved an ordinance, but there has to be an ordinance approved for the county to collect it. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's okay. what I'm, I'm thinking that maybe, okay, it's a separate issue, but that's it. I see what you're saying. We may have an ordinance in place that says we're going to... We They didn't follow up. That, we didn't do that now? No, we didn't follow up. But regardless, since she's collecting real estate and personal property taxes, we would need to amend the ordinance to include um, demolition or nuisance tax. No demolition. No demolition, that's right. I'm sorry, that was a slip of words. Um, for the nuisance tax. So it would probably be easier just to amend it all as one. So we're actually talking about minus the demolition, just basically going out to a piece of property, either maintaining the grass or the uh, debris that may be on the property, that sort of thing. That's what, what that's, that's what you're talking about. That's what we're talking about. Okay. I think perfect. And I did, I did attach a copy of a, a statement kind of showing where the nuisance goes on the statement. Uh, and then just a sample of, uh, you know, an ordinance that's been created. Right. And then also where we've had to amend the walk-in.
Terry, just for clarification, um, if we assess, say, a hundred dollar nuisance, of that hundred dollars, you keep eight percent of that for handling this. No, no, three percent. Three percent. Okay. The eight, I eight percent is if it's delinquent. All right. Then they start accumulating interest. Eight percent. Eight percent. I was just trying to figure out if that was your fee or no. That's interest that is just like you that is delinquent on real estate taxes. They accumulate penalties and interest. Right. So, Great. And this interest on the delinquent isn't as much as it is on. <coughs> Penalties and interest on regular real estate. Okay. And is it the same for everyone, uh, for every one of these real estates that you would take out and would cost the same amount for each one? I'm sorry, I don't, I don't understand that. Uh, on the real estate, you would be taking that over, put that on your taxes, right? On the person's tax bill. Would it? Be the same for everyone. It would be whatever you have yeah, built, what you whatever you have built your mm -hmm. taxpayer mm -hmm. when you've gone out. It could be different because it may take you five hours at one place, it may take three hours right. at another. That's totally up to your okay. city ordinance and how you have deemed <coughs> able to build them for cutting their yard or removing debris. Right. And so, I mean, it could be a hundred dollars. It could be. For instance, this one you're looking at was four hundred and five dollars. That was more than one time at that particular residence. Mm -hmm. So I make sure I have this procedure right. We go out, we do the work, we present them with the bill. They fail to pay the bill, then we send the bill to you, and you'll levy it against their taxes. Is that the correct procedure? That yes. That's okay. I mean, you have to do something ahead of that. Gotcha. You have to notify. That's right. 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 I was certified that we have to do that, yes. To do that, but, but once you've done all that and charged them and you can't get it collected, you need to try to collect it collection. locally. Mm -hmm. um, and if you can, then enter <coughs> here. This isn't the whole process. This is just purely part of the mechanism. Right. So because it wasn't finished before with the ordinances, mm -hmm. this is just wrapping it up so that as we progress along with dealing with nuisances, the city's able to gather back money that was spent to handle some of the instances. So the whole process, if you want to talk about the whole process, that's that's something different, but Terry's here to talk about the mechanism of that is so right. what she can do. Yes. And now we will not go back and, and, right. and try to play the <coughs> Just the current year. Go just, ahead. just, you know, whenever, if you decide that you want the county to do this, um, want our office to, to do it, then um, that's the the period of time will start. So, for instance, if you decided in 2019 that you want us to handle that, then that's the year that it will start. Right. If you've accumulated like, bills 18, 17, 16, we, we cannot address those. Well, it would probably have to be after the approval of the county commission that they yeah. are going forward. Correct. And the city hasn't really been on top of taking care of the nuisances in the past. So, really, we're kind of at square one. We've already taken steps to send out letters, even adjust our ordinances if necessary. This is kind of the next step in the process. It's going to take a minute before we start sending you stuff if we approve everything. But we just need to wrap up the process. So we started this in 2014 when I was on the council before. And you know, what we had to do is basically pull up the, the ordinance that was applied at that time and probably do the amendment to it. And then when we had started, that's what I'm doing. Jeff was, Jeff was on this. This is what one of his pet peeves. He had a lot of houses to come down. Anybody have any there you questions? We've got a question. Can you also add the attorney's fees and mail? Can you guys mail this stuff up to the people? Can you add that to the fees too? I don't see how it's going to be done. I don't see why you're doing that's part of the fees, isn't it? I believe state statutes still cover those to be added. Yeah. It says in the state statute. It's going to be mailed to the people. Can they have those fees also? Um, I don't believe I have seen any of those charges on the statements that I have received, but I cannot answer that. A, Definitely. Yeah. That would be something we have we to look into. Yeah, it does say on the state statute, though, that it's all in code. It just doesn't say it happened. I'm assuming when the property sells? But how would you parse out how much attorney fees charge each property? The city is the one, particularly the clerk. 
Yeah, but the, I guess it, this is it. I was told, and God only knows if this is correct. I was told that there's, when the attorney has to go into court to get the property declared as a nuisance, those are those, those are the fees that the attorney would generally charge the city for. So when, if the judge rules in the city's favor, then that person has to pay the attorney's fees. Procedurally, you typically shouldn't be getting to that point where you're down filing a lawsuit to have these, I mean, if you have a major nuisance, like some of these burnt down houses and things like that, that she's not going to collect for us. We've got a number that just need to be demolished in the city. The state statutes you're referring to, off the top of my head, without reading them in front of me, applies to those types of cases. Your attorney's fees on these people with rubbish and broke down cars in their yards or all that kind of crap. City sends out. I don't even see it. Best case, they're going to be a municipal citation that's lumped in with the rest of the municipal court. Those, you're talking about the big assessments of the houses that need demos. That's just a okay. so Thanks for the question. That's a good question. In essence, if they have a burnt piece, if they have a burnt home in their property, and they need, they're going to pay the same taxes as a fixed structure on their property. Am I correct? Whether it's livable or not, I no, it goes to the assessor. No, it has to go to the assessor, and the assessor would and go the out and evaluate it. He would go out and reassess it and adjust. Well, what I'm saying is, it would, would it be more to the benefit of the homeowner to demolish the house and get rid of it and pay lesser taxes than to leave the home on the property? Because if it's not livable, I'm thinking the assessor would probably go ahead and consider the structure. I think that's a question for each individual to ask there. Yeah. Their uh, financial plan or return. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to depend on each person. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thanks so much. Question? I just had a quick question, just for point information. Prior to 2013, the city collector would sit down and make up. They would figure the personal property and the real estate taxes. You used to have a yellow sheet, a blue sheet, she would hand it to you. You took that over. Uh, do you do all the calculations then, or does, or is our city collector supposed to do that? Yeah. You do it all. Okay. Yeah, we have the program. Okay. And, um, I couldn't remember. I couldn't yeah, remember. It's, it's all plugged in. So basically, and we do all the mailing. So there's really, as far as processing or yes. calculating, the city yeah, has no care. overhead on that. Okay. We we take care of all that, and then we just provide you with the with the funds at the beginning of the next month once we. have Balanced everything. Thank you. All right, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Next on the agenda, we have approved minutes. These can be approved in whole, they can be approved in part, they can be taken for any corrections. May I speak, Mayor? Go ahead, please. With regard to the minutes of January 17th, line item 6 bills to be paid, um, this needs corrected. I approved everything. As far as expenditures, with exception of attorney fees, I asked to abstain from that. So instead of showing it that I abstain from all that is incorrect, I did specifically recall stating that I approve everything except the attorney fees of Jeff Thomas, which I abstain. If you all recall. Thanks, Jesse. <laughs> Because I'm about to make a motion and we approve the minutes. 
Okay. I make a motion that we approve the minutes of January 17, with the exception of what I stated on line item 6, March 25th, February 21, February 28. And the roll call. Yeah, and the roll call. All right, so there's a motion to approve all the minutes except for the corrections of item 2 and 6 on the 17th. Is that correct? Correct. All right, and it's been seconded with a vote. Ryan Jones? Yes. Dave Dilgers? Yes. Donald Fleming? Yes. Chris Munson? Yes. Robert Thomas? Yes. 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 Uh, so these next two items kind of go together. Uh, in the past, we talked about the communication orders because it stands. Ordinance allows for the city to do new construction. Uh, the bridge on North Elm Street, correct if I'm not wrong, but if it was to be removed completely and a new one put in, that's new construction. There's about 79,000, 80,000 in that right now, and we don't have our alternative to do. Okay. Right. Um, in the last past, week and a half I've been doing research. In fact, I met with Josh. Is he here today? He is no? Oh, okay. I met with Josh and asked him to meet me at that area um, to try to come up with some sort of solution for the residents. I've had several come to my home and ask what's going to be done. Several of them have cattle trailers and they said the alternate route isn't wide enough the roadway to make the turn. So, um, I contacted the mayor and asked for his approval to do some research into this, uh, which he granted. I spoke with uh, Josh, and Josh met me at the site and gave me culvert dimensions um, for ordering uh, concrete culverts to make the repairs. Just to give you uh, some information on what I did, I spoke with Chris from Scurlock of Springfield um, for a precast concrete culvert. He said that they were built in six foot sections and because of that, the dimensions Josh had provided me were 48 by 48 inches wide and by 40 feet long by approximate depth of 46 feet. Um, they said they could bring the culverts to the city, but they cannot unload or install. And the total cost um, for fabricating these culverts would be $9,850. That's without setup. I was referred to Murdoch of St. James. I called them. They said, we do not deal in concrete culverts. Um, I contacted Mid-America Precast out of Eldon and spoke with the Mitchell there. He said they can bring the culvers, um, and again it would be in six foot sections to make it uh, easier to move off of the trailer and, and place um, in sections. Um, they said that they could dig and place them, um, and they would have an engineer that could sign off as to safety, develop the plans, do the final inspection um, for insurance purposes. He said that cost would be $20,000 for everything. That's what the engineer, right? That's what their engineer, right. He would do the initial plans, um, oversee the fabrication of the concrete culverts, and the installation and final inspection, and I um, assumed that the engineer would give a, uh, a letter, a final inspection, so that we could prevent them to present that to the insurance company um, for coverage. Um, BNN, I talked to Billy Nall from BNN. He said that he would do the complete job, including the setting, the filling, and everything for $9,000. Um, when I inquired with Billy uh, if he had an engineer, he said that he would check and let me know. And he said he doesn't have an engineer and, and he couldn't find one 
that would be in a position to do that. And, and the problem with that is it's complicated because when you have an individual business, which I would love to give being in our business since they're local, uh, if they don't have an engineer, it's going to be hard to find an engineer that, that's going to say, okay, we'll do a final inspection sign off on it because there's a lot of concrete testing that they have to do to make sure it's not too porous, it's not too brittle uh, for potential problems. And typically, engineers will want their own staff or contract with someone that they know is reputable to, to perform the job and then um, oversee it and do their final inspection. So that's a problem you run into. Yeah. Doug Brown does a lot of concrete work. Does anybody do something with him and see if he has an engineer that might be... Could you speak up, Diane? I said Doug Brown has a concrete business. I spoke with and Doug briefly last did. week, but it, 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 there's a difference between pouring concrete with a foundation and when you're actually building a concrete culvert. I um, so I'm looking from the perspective of him maybe having an engineer available for maybe some jobs. <coughs> um, I don't know, and that's a good question, um, but I can check. Okay. Um, I also checked with Beco Concrete Park Products and spoke with Gary. Um, he said they do culvert uh, concrete boxes and they also are sold in six wooden uh, sections, but only uh, four foot tall as opposed to six foot. Um, their cost for doing that, including the engineers, $30,000. Okay. So, according to what I have here, the best estimate we have is from BNN. Um, the second best would be Scurlock out of Springfield for $98.50. But here's the problem they can only deliver it. We have to unload it from the trailers, we have to do the placement. And there again, when you're dealing with an engineer, um, most engineers I, that I've dealt with in the past will say, no, we either do it from start to finish or we don't want any part of signing off as far as safety. So, um, I was going to say, in America, pre-test seems like they're, they're all inclusive for 20000 Right. And we don't know the cost of being in, which is half that in front of the install, but we don't know what we're Right. Mm -hmm. I think right. we still need to talk to Doug Brown a little more. And, well, and, and here when we deal with, with, with the local companies, the problem is an engineer. And I, I can confidently say, go ahead, do you have some information? Yes. Uh, Grace uh, Construction has an engineer employed. So Kevin Bruce? Kevin Bruce. I talked to him and he doesn't. I know he has an engineer. Well, I'm just saying, he told me he did. There's one other question. Have you looked into just a straight 44 inch uh, corrugated culvert, uh, culvert instead of using a box culvert? Because what's going to have to happen to that is because I, I went out and assessed it. There's a six foot piece of uh, concrete missing out of the center of the road, which is all in the road in the way. Okay? And you've got two 90 degree corners for that flow going through. You can take that from the one corner and eliminate the whole stuff. You can That's put, what the 40 foot is. It's yeah. tying it up from the other corner right. so it's okay. not coming down and making right. a square going up. So the 40 foot section would be sitting it at a diagonal where you don't have that right. that harsh. And are yeah. you able, have you looked into being able to use a 48 inch corrugated metal as opposed to a box culvert? No, for the mere fact that because of the weight limits, from what I understand, with school buses and heavy equipment traveling over, you know, you're going to have to have an engineer for use of culvert. You're going to have to have an engineer that's going to do the testing on the concrete to say that it's adequate and can withstand that much weight. You're talking to an engineer. An engineer. I'm understanding. About are you an engineer, or yes, you worked at? You are an engineer. I am. I've, I've designed culverts license? before and done culvert repair for the military. Are you licensed? I am not licensed. All my stuff has gone off through, and uh, I had a PA that was my battalion commander and, and signed off on everything. Ah, uh, I see. But all the, well, all the, design, all the design factors are there. 
MDOT, ha MDOT has designs that are already signed off. Yes, you still need an inspector, but you're looking at more cost at a concrete culvert mm -hmm. as you are over a 48 inch metal corrugated culvert. All I'm saying. As long as it's just a, a simple price comparison. As looking at, at, at the difference of the two, because you will incur, like you said, uh, increased costs on a concrete culvert because they need to go through and they have when they're when they're casting it, it all needs to be tested. They'll right. take a sample out each each section, each section. and there goes a compression and a flexion test. Right. Those cost money. That's to where you don't need that with a metal culvert. Okay, in a metal culvert. Only requires half an addition on a 48 inch pipe that requires a two foot overhead. And, and then all you have to do is build your head wall and walls, which are just basically for erosion control. I'm just saying that's just another option as opposed to a box call. I appreciate that. Yeah. Well, you know, if you do go with call, we're the pitch line on the uh, on the east side. Elm Street here would have to be dug out appropriately because it's hardly a ditch line at all. And yeah. it, all runs, it all runs across the road anyway. So it would have to be dug out to meet the, you know, it, have, it would actually have to be engineered so that the water could flow appropriately through the pipes as opposed to if we have an accumulation onto the road. And I think that's why we need an engineer at this point. For the mere fact, if, if something is installed, first of all, the city can't afford the lawsuit, the liability there. And it has to be something that the insurance will cover in the event there would be a disaster, a school bus would go over and it would collapse because the example, the concrete was too porous or whatever. And I'm not an expert at this. I just learned as I went along, but I'm trying to make an effort to see what options we have to get this repaired because it's it's created a hardship for a lot of people in the in the community. Um, and I understand what you're saying I, and it makes sense to me that a metal culvert would be a lot simpler and cheaper than, than a... a uh, That's what you see across all your interstates. Right. Or metal, metal culverts. Right. It's a cheaper and, and it has, and they hold up the mold, I mean, well, I'm your dirt road tonight, but yeah. the metal as well. I've seen that's the majority of what I have what I seen, but... It, yeah, it's just worried about the compaction and the placement uh, as your method would have been. But my, my point is, whatever we decide to do, bottom line is we need an engineer. Yeah. Whatever the, the city doesn't necessarily... I don't want to see this as a concern, but it's something on the right track. The city isn't necessarily concerned with whether it's concrete or metal. I think the city council wants the best for that bridge. The best, the cheapest, and the yes. safest, all in one word. The process matters because make sure that we're going about it right. Because if we build this bridge wrong and something happens, who's liable to fall? And how many, how many times in the city have we done something wrong? Like, <laughs> our our so animals in the street? I mean, let's stop doing things the wrong way. I know it's painful, and let's do them the right way. I had one of these um, gentlemen, um, it was Springfield, Chris from Scurlock, said, you know, ma'am, whatever you do, make sure that you have an engineer, because there have been several suits over this where the city went ahead, did their own road, and he said, uh, they've been sued, and I can tell you the majority of the time, they prevail. That's when you need license. Yeah. We need a license and he says, you know, everybody, there are several small municipalities like yours that tries to fix it on their own, and and he said, quite honestly, you need an engineer to look at it and, and say exactly what needs to be done. And he said, there's just been so many lawsuits, and, and whoever sues them has prevailed over the city almost every time. I know many places that has that law he's done. So I won't spend too much on this. I just want to mention that John Ward is coming this week. If the council wants to approve him to come and present us with plans, hopefully give us plans on concrete. Where's he? I want to say wire to wire one. 
Sean Byron. He's no. Elder. Elder. He's an elder. Okay. Sean He's done some work at City Woods. Great. And he can come yes. and present and we can ask him if the council wants to make code. Ask him, hey, give us a price points on doing concrete, yeah. on doing metal pipes, on doing <laughs> some I'm not here, but I want to do it. Right. And then you need to make sure we The idea behind this is that it's a new project to take care of that whole uh, area. Whole area. Yeah. Not, okay. This is not a repair job that we're looking at. This okay. is new construction and setting the city up for success for the next 10 to 20 years by doing the yeah. job right. right. Okay. Yeah, I think we need to wait and see what he has to say. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Well, I make a motion that we get uh, John Wood down here to give us an estimate for the new price on the repair for not repairing the construction. Or for the construction of the North Elm Street Bridge and Ditch, ditch Line uh, be conclusive. Okay, the motion to have an engineer come and look at the new bridge. I'll second. And have the city with option. It's been second or a small vote. Madam Schultz? Yes. Any questions? Yes. No plan? Yes. Ms. Watson? Yes. Mark Thomas? Yes. That's the plan there for the engineer to come the bridge. And let me just remind everybody about the transportation. Transportation funds, by ordinance, the city ordinance, it only can be spent on new construction. That's it. it. Cannot be used for repair, cannot be used for anything else because the bond was used for uh, new construction. That's how the payments were made up in the past. But this fund, unless it's changed by ordinance, cannot be used for anything else. And again, it's about $80,000 on that. I think it may say repairs as well, but not ordinary repairs. So I guess only extraordinary repairs that we've been talking about before for equipment. But I think it does say repairs, but it specifically excludes potholes. Yeah. Maintenance. So no, then the dish line would be included in that? I'd be like, it's, it's all on the It's all on the Okay. I would have to be replacing the whole... As I understand. Yeah, that's a, there's, there's a 20 foot run through there, it would not lock, knock out that turn mm -hmm. to go into the culvert, and it would come at a, an angle, and it would totally eliminate that. And that would be an easier flow of the water yeah, rather than the cluttering. But nonetheless, we need to get it done. Like I said, I've had a lot of people call me, stop by and talk to me about it, and it needs, it needs taken care of. Next okay. Item. Next item is the budget. Okay. This budget is all the things that Nelson's has gone through. It means that you just expand the to be approved. However, you all may want to add for this culvert in there. Make an estimate and add it in the street farm. There needs to be some type of line item in the I would say, based on the estimates that I have, and this is just this is just guessing at this point. I would say it would be safe to say twenty thousand in the new line item for new build on the streets. And then I would make the other. Who's going to make it? It would be under street. Street. Or the council can wait to do that. But well, I'm, I'm, I would suggest, suggest we do it now because if we meet with this engineer and he comes back with the plan, we don't have to have a another meeting to amend exactly. the budget to do all exactly. this. We're ready to go. And this amended budget does get approval overall, too. Right. So it would be if this is something the council desires, we vote to add this line item right. and increase engineer. And then also, and then another one to approve this budget. How do you all feel when I'm just table talking here? Twenty thousand for the actual new bill, and let's say um, five thousand for the engineer cost on that. That's just approximately to transfer to amend the budget. So How do you all? About twenty-five thousand. Yeah. Is that what you're talking yeah. about? Yeah. Out of the street. Out of the street. Street monies. That's got eight thousand. Nothing anywhere other than the street. Right. Yeah. How do you all feel about that? Okay, I make a motion that we amend the budget for streets 
uh, for 20,000 to be shown in the line item of um, street improvements. Yes, new new building of streets, new streets. Okay. I, I think would be the best item. New street, um, and then 5,000 toward engineer costs. I'll second the motion. Okay, there's a motion to add to the budget 20,000 for new streets and 5,000 for engineer fees. And the second and roll call vote. Thank you, Schultz. Yes. Keith Schultz. Yes. Not funny. Yes. Ms. Watson. Yes. Rob Thomas. Yes. That's the final zero for $5,000 for new streets, $5,000 for engineer costs on the budget. And then this budget, this is our amended budget after all the changes that the council has made. It needs to be improved to have input. It includes things uh, like adjusting for lawyer fees, uh, payroll reductions that we make, et cetera, et cetera. No, that's just on the wrong line. 
by how big, how, what is it? I don't know. Josh has got all of that information. Um, he's, he said it's that he took down all the information that he was going to do a plan and everything to show us what they were asking as a shelter versus a right. So as of right now, we are just a kennel. I'm going to change the ordinance just to take off the five days. Because we can find homes for these dogs, but it may not be within our five days. <coughs> Five day range. Okay. So I just want to keep it as is, except just take off the five days. We'll get them moved out when we can get them moved out. And we'll do that. Um, Lou is um, working on the flyers now. I'm getting mm -hmm. donations to dog foods and stuff like that. So we are still going as planned. I just needed the ordinance to take off that five days. And replace it with what? Just for within the 14 to 21 days is what we're looking at. I think that's reasonable. Uh, yes. But you know, a lot of times people go to the but they will come and get the dogs to come to the point where it becomes a kill situation. That's what they've been doing before. Do you want the wings when we come down and get the dogs? Yeah, if they if they're not they full. Yeah, if they're, yeah, they're not full. Time. Time. Really? And is that 21 working days or is that 21? That's 21 working days. Because on the weekends we can't do much because hardly anybody's open. And you know, um, Lou's been putting uh, our Facebook works well with the dog house. So I would just like to make a motion to change the five days from on the ordinance to change it to 14 to 21 days.
we need to place out of this 50,000, 10,000 of that into the reserve. Yes. Absolutely. Which we put, uh, we put that at $40,135.39 total bills to be paid. It's actually time. less. And we need to oh, yes, you're right. You're absolutely right. Thank you. Where are we at on this part? Wow. 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 While you're refiguring that, so that everybody's aware that the next bond payment is due for 24-19. It needs to be put in the mail in the next couple of weeks versus towards the end because you do not want this to arrive late. Uh, the interest amount due is $15,923.75. The principal amount due is $35,000. The trustee paying agent fee is $212.50 for a total of $50,000. One hundred and thirty-six dollars and twenty-five cents. Fifty-one thousand one hundred thirty-six. Yes, and we have how much money? Thirty-seven thousand. That'll just be right there. You got thirty-seven thousand. You put another ten. That'll be forty-seven in a couple of weeks. Put the rest of it in there. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank we have fifty-one thousand one hundred thirty-six dollars and twenty-five cents is due. Yes. We have thirty-seven on hand. We just added ten thousand from the bills. We'll add it to the trust we will on. Okay. Well, I'm saying we're gonna we'll, we'll add that up on both. And then the balance would be four thousand one hundred thirty-six dollars and twenty-five cents to pay the bond. Which Yay. what a pleasure that is. Yeah. It did get some more than we're doing. I'm not stressing at all. <laughs> Good deal. And we still have a balance of $10,324.80. But I recommend you that. I would recommend, yes. Mm -hmm. I, I'm going to say this is hands off, please. I'm going to ask the calculator, please, not ask for any of that money. Because it, it can be allocated for other reasons. How much was that? $10,324.80 to the good.
court. Uh, the court needs to have approval to pay the bonds. Correct, Jesse? Mm -hmm. The bonds, they need approval to pay the bonds. Yeah, that's the individual bonds. Bond, just the individual bonds that we get locked up, stuff like that. And to uh, uh, write the checks out if they're needed. So yeah, they would be the place on the account. Because the bond, when the bonds come in, that's not our money. She needs to just be able to move it out, so we're not getting a toll later on. Absolutely, here. because it's not even our money. So we need a motion to put this in. Can you make a motion, you can, if you write the checks um, back in for the bonds, or whatever she needs to do back into the courts, for her to be able to take care of that. And be placed on the account? And be placed on the account. She is on the account. Okay. Yes, sir. I'll second that. Yeah. Okay, so then uh, there's a motion to second the second vote. Yes. Uh, Jones. Yes. Malcolm. Yes. Uh, Chris Watson. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thomas. Yes. Yes. Okay. Good. And that being said, we can go into closed session if they want to vote. On the motion to go into closed session. I submit the nomination for Ward Three that was on oh. the agenda. Okay, the nomination for Ward Three. I am the, the person. I think it's best at this point to let the voters decide on who they want to vote so for. Okay.